Everybody, welcome back. Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 42. It's August the 2nd. I want to do a real quick shout out. Today is my mom's birthday, and so I uh, want to say happy birthday to her. I don't know if she watches um, any of my Monday videos, but if she does, there you go. I will call her here in a little bit and tell her happy birthday. And then we are going to, as well, uh, cook her dinner tonight. I'm actually cooking it all day today in the crock pot. I'm making her asabuco for her birthday, so we're going to go over there and have dinner with her this evening. She's got to work today, as do we, because this week is Waco. And we are really busy right now trying to get ready to leave. We will leave on Wednesday, probably early afternoon, something like that. We're going to head on up there, get checked in, probably try to see if we can get in there and dump all our stuff off in our booth spot. And then uh, Thursday morning, we will be teaching our belt class. I think they called it a repeating pattern belt class or something. Basically, we're going to talk about the finish. We're going to tool a section of a belt uh, pattern, and then we're going to take it all the way to where it's a finished tooled piece. And then we're going to focus on the doing a two-tone uh, die job, which is what I my most popular finish, which is a two-tone uh, light old antique. So I'm going to show them how to dye that, and then as well as how to antique it. So we'll take that little piece all the way through. Each student in this class will also receive a, a belt material pack that we sell, the ones that we sell on our website. And so after the class, they'll have the experience to be able to go through and tool the complete belt and go ahead and do a two-tone uh, job on there and then antique that. Um, there just wasn't going to be enough time in a one-day class to be able to build an entire belt. So we want them to be able to do that, but we're going to mainly focus on the tooling and the finishing. Another thing that we got done just in time for Waco is the yoke tote. We got it completely finished. I got the handles put on this weekend and uh, in the last week and this weekend. And I did kind of a raised uh, middle kind of shaped uh, handle on here. I was gonna do a rolled handle, but they just didn't seem to go with it. So I went ahead and did these raised um, type of handles on there. But if you are coming to Waco, it will be in the booth on display. So you're more welcome to come by and check it out and uh, kind of ask me any questions you might have. It was kind of a kind of a different construction. So it had a lot of little twists and turns in it as far as concepts of me trying to put this thing together. Did a lot of things a little bit differently. Uh, this bag I don't think is a functional everyday carry bag. It's more of a showpiece, which is kind of what I intended it for anyway. And I wanted to try a bunch of different things, but Claudia is real happy with it. And uh, it's gonna be a cool piece that'll always be in the shop. And uh, unless she's carrying it, which I don't think she'll carry it to the dollar store or Walmart or something, but. Um, but anyway, it, it's just a, it was a fun project and we're glad that it's done and I'm happy to bring it to Waco and kind of show it off a little bit. A couple other things, like I said, this week it's all about Waco because that's where we're going to be from uh, this weekend and uh, trying to get the shop ready, get everything going. So we haven't been working on a whole lot of projects other than that. We got the two rope bags done. Um, I posted a picture of one of them, the one I've been showing you. I posted a picture of it on Instagram finished uh, i think it mainly j maybe just didn't have the straps but the straps are like i do all all the straps on all our rope bags but we got that one done we got the other one done as well and it is shipped off because we're trying to hit a special date and so it had to had to get out of here but we'll get some pictures of that like i said later on we'll show you what that one looked like last week we also got our next couple of printed packs these are both old pattern packs so again these two have been out for a long time the wristlet purse pattern many of y'all have this pattern pack this is one of our top sellers and it's making the uh, little wristlet purses this one is our bifold which is another one that's been out for probably a couple of years it's a very good pattern as well for us it does well a lot of people already have this so if you already have these you do not need to buy the printed version we're not going to put either one of these on the website until we get back from waco because i only got i don't even remember how many i got but i didn't get a ton um, because this pattern pack has been out for so long, many people already have this. So, um, but if you're, you know, if you're watching this video, you're not coming to Waco and you do want one of these, give us a holler at the shop or shoot us an email. We can certainly get you one, but they will be on the website after this week. So next week when we get back Monday or Tuesday, whatever we've got left, um, we'll go ahead and put them on the website. I'll also reorder so that we have plenty in the store for anybody that might want them. But like I said, if you already have it, no reason to buy the printed one. It's just, it's the exact same one. These are older patterns that I created a long time ago, and the way I used to do them was just drawing them actually on, on paper and then inking them in and then scanning those in on my flatbed scanner. Um, there's some challenges that come into doing them that way. Now we're using utilizing Illustrator and some other software a lot uh, more efficiently to try to make the patterns a little bit more accurate. So, um, But what I did was I just took the older PDF pages and then put them on 
like the bifold is on one bigger piece of paper. So all the pages are actually on there. And then the wristlet purse is actually two pages of the larger paper. With each individual page um, that you would normally print out, each one of those is on those, those larger sheets. Just makes it a little bit easier on the printers and it, and it made it a little easier on us to make sure that it printed to scale. They are a little bit off, um, but there's really not, a, not, not much I can do to fix that. It's just the way that the file is. And so what I'm probably gonna do is, since these two are, are kind of our hottest sellers as far as this is what a lot of people like, these two patterns a lot, um, I will probably, after we get back from Waco and going into the fall, I'm thinking about making another version of the wristlet and the bifold. So maybe some new tooling patterns, maybe it's just a tooling pattern um, accessory. I'll probably do new files too though for the cut pieces, just so that they're a little bit more accurate. Um, but but they work, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. I just wanna get them kind of a little bit more accurate for our material packs. Because as we go, when we go to Waco, we're taking a lot of bifold material packs. I've got a bunch of goat skin in last week, cut all the interiors up for that. We've got a big, a big pile of bifold wallet material packs. So if you've been wanting to get some of those or to try that goat skin, we'll have those available there. We'll also have a lot of wristlet uh, purse material packs. So we're also gonna have a lot of those. And I went through and just kind of went through all the various chap leathers that I have in the shop and picked out some cool colors and cut up a bunch of that. And so if you're interested in getting a, trying your hand at a wristlet purse and don't want to sacrifice some of your leather, maybe don't have enough leather, um, we'll, we'll sell the material packs when we're there. We got a bunch of stuff cut this weekend. I've got, I'm bringing knife scabbards. I'm bringing bifold wallets, like I said, wristlet purses, um, probably bring some rope can lids and some different things. We just got a pile of stuff that we're, I'm just going to steadily cut until we leave and uh, bring as much stuff as I can. We will also bring some uh, belt material packs as well. I don't know how many of those I'm going to have. Um, our leather, our next leather shipment hasn't gotten here, so we're running a little bit low on liner for a lot of the belt material packs. So I don't know if we'll have any of those there, um, or I don't know how many we'll have there, but we'll get what we can and we'll bring them along with us. But we will be in the booth, uh, like I said, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, try to cut out of there a little early on Sunday if we can to get back. We've got lots of stuff to feed and we've got some boys that are gonna feed for us while we're gone and stuff, but, um, but we will be there. And so if you're in Waco, come by the booth. I was at Hobby Lobby this weekend. I went Sunday or Saturday um, to find some paintbrushes because the, for the class, I don't know if people are bringing paintbrushes. I can't remember if we told them to bring their, the paintbrushes they like to use or what, but I wanna have plenty. So I went and bought the kind I usually get. These are the kind that I get at Hobby Lobby. If you have a Hobby Lobby near you, it doesn't matter the brand. You don't need this exact brand. But these are just some real cheap little all-purpose craft brushes. And this pack in general, it's got some uh, detail brushes in there and then some bigger round brushes and stuff like that. Um, this here has a lot of just liner brushes or detail brushes in here. And I like the longer skinny one that um, you've seen me use in some of our, our other videos where we're talking about dyeing leather, dyeing patterns, stuff like that. Um, because the longer the tip on that thing, even though it's skinny, the longer the tip, you can you can load that brush with dye and you can dye more background pieces before you run out of dye. So you're not constantly back into the dye. A lot of people will pick the tiniest little bitty brush to do the background because it's fine detail work. But if you'll get a, still a real thin brush, but a longer one, then you can load that brush with much more dye. And if you're careful, you can make it through three or four little background sections before you have to reload your brush in the dye. But anyhow, we've talked about that before. That's some of what we're gonna be talking about in the class. And I just went and bought a bunch of different brushes. There's all kinds of, all kinds of brushes that I found. Um, I bought out pretty much all they had of the ones that I usually get because I'm always needing new ones. Especially now with the kids in the shop, they kind of trash my brushes most of the time. And then I also found these, which we've used these before in the shop. I can remember back in the day, somebody had gone to Hobby Lobby and found these. These are a little bit harder to find if you go into Hobby Lobby. I think they're more over by the models and stuff, like the, the plastic car models and airplane models, but they work really good too. So I bought three packs of those. I'm just gonna take a various amount of brushes for the class. And if you're not in that class here, but you're coming to Waco, uh, feel free to come by the booth and ask me any questions that you might have as far as for dyeing or belt making or saddle making anything, we'll, we'll be there in the booth. We're happy to answer any questions. We'll just be hanging out. So um, look forward to, to visiting about that. 
last week's Monday morning video was a little long. I didn't realize that it was 45 minutes long until I went to actually um, export it and, and, and then get it loaded to YouTube. And I, I was going to cut it down some, but it had a lot of good information in there, I feel. As far as from a marketing standpoint, I feel like we answered a couple questions that we've been getting a lot from people. Um, and we'll try to do more of those as we move forward. I'll try not to do that too many times just so that the videos don't get too long. These are meant to be short little little update videos, see what's going on. But um, I enjoy talking about that stuff, and I hope that the marketing conversation as well as the pricing conversation from the week before uh, was somewhat helpful or at least gave you another vantage point to look at and just something else to kind of kind of consider and uh, and kind of see how you want to run your business and uh, whether it's a hobby or whether it's your, you know a side hustle or your full-time gig. But we're going to kind of kind of dive into that a little bit more and more as we go along. And uh, just because I feel like that's a conversation that we need to have. And uh, and we are having that on the podcast uh, very frequently. Last week's podcast on Lost Trade was with Douglas Krause. And he's the most intriguing thing for me is that he's a horsehair braider and a hitcher. And he makes Makati reins and, and horsehair rope and stuff. And it's very, very intriguing. I really like that that craft. I've dabbled in it some when I was younger. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it seems more complicated than it probably is, but um, I did a just a minimal amount of hitching when I was uh, in high school and stuff, and just couldn't just couldn't stick with it. But I, I'm not um, cut out to be a braider of, of of any kind, really. I just don't have the patience for that. I can sit there and tool on something at the bench for you know six eight hours, but the braiding just kind of. It's not for me right now, so maybe one of these days I'll pick it up. But it was very interesting talking to Mr. Krause and uh, hearing his story. I knew he was a saddle maker, like, like we said in the podcast. I met him years ago and didn't, wasn't really familiar with him because he's from out there, Arizona way, in that area. And, uh, but, but then I looked him up, and, and it was like, man, he's really a saddle maker. And you know, at that time, it was really cool to kind of connect with somebody like that And because uh, I was very young in my career and just kind of starting out. But um, we had a lot of fun on the interview. He's got, he's got a really cool take on business and just how he looks at stuff and then tooling and design. And his stuff is very unique. If you go to his uh, Facebook page or Instagram and check out some of his work, his tooling is very specific. I can pick it out from anybody. If I see somebody's tooling, I'll, I'll, if I see some tooling, I'll know it's, it's his if that's who tooled it because his style and design and layout is very, very unique to him. I haven't seen a lot of people tool like that, and I like I like that because we all kind of we all kind of follow who we admire, and um, a lot of the tooling ends up kind of sometimes can have the same aspects across different different craftsmen, and sometimes it, you think it's almost impossible to, to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, or come up with something new that nobody else has ever done. Um, I battle that all the time, but um, but it is. It, it there's so many out there, so many great toolers and craftsmen out there that sometimes it can get hard to to try to figure out a, a way to tool something that nobody's seen. And I don't know if that can be done, and I don't know if he's doing that either. Um, I think all of us pretty well agree that you know if you come up with a flower you think nobody's ever tooled before, you're probably wrong because it's it, it we've been tooling leather for so long that there's virtually probably no way to come up with something that's truly never been tooled before. So. But yeah, we had a lot of fun with him. So check it out. Uh, Apple and Spotify, if you haven't already, Lost Trade Podcast. Um, we're real excited about the podcast. We're excited to talk to you all about it at Waco. If you're if you're in there, let us know what you think. If you've been listening to the podcast, any changes we can make. Um, I know the audio could be better. Um, we've gotten some emails on that, and we're working up to getting some better gear and stuff like that. But right now, it's just a passion project, and I'd rather turn out some content that um, that that's decent than, than, than not turn out anything at all. So we'll, uh, we'll work as we move forward to, to upgrade that and make that a little bit better. But, but let, let us know at Waco kind of what you think about it. If you've been listening and let us know which ones are your favorite, we're going to kind of, kind of do a little bit of data collection while we're there and just try to uh, see where we're at and some of the things that we're doing to know how we can do that better for y'all. Also want to mention that if you're not going to the heart of Texas leather show in Waco this week, uh, Thursday will start the, the classes start tomorrow and run through Thursday and then the show is Friday Saturday Sunday so if you're not coming and to, to Waco or not going there and you're gonna order something off of our website uh, outside of the digital products those that runs automatically if you order digital patterns nothing will slow down there but I just wanted to kind of put this out there for anybody watching our uh, Monday morning videos here 
that we will be gone. So me and the wife and kids, we're all, we're all going. So the shop will be closed. And so if you do order like cap or shirt or, or um, material pack, I think we're running kind of slim on a lot of those. But if you do order something, just bear with us. We will ship it when we get back that next Monday. So next Monday it will ship then, but it will not ship if you order it, um, say Wednesday. If you order it Wednesday, it's not going to ship until the following Monday. So just bear with us. We usually try to get uh, orders out every day. Um, and, and I know sometimes I get, I get worried that they, you know, it's a day off or something like that. But, um, but usually when somebody orders something every morning, we run our orders and we ship them out the next day. So within reason, everything goes out the, the next day or the day after. Um, but this week, just know that we'll be out of the shop. And so we will not be here. So if you do order something, just uh, be patient, and Monday morning when we get here, we'll get that shipped out to you. Also, when we get back, like I said, whatever we've got left, we will update the website and add all the products. Because I'm not adding any of the stuff that we're cutting to the website. Um, I'm not trying to cut anybody out. It's just one of them things. If I, if I add it to the website, then we're going to have a lot of orders to ship while we're gone. And so I'd rather not frustrate people that maybe don't watch this video and don't understand that we're out of the shop. And so right now we're running a little slim on stuff. So the orders are kind of a little slow. So I want to keep it that way until we get back. And then once we get back, we'll upload all that stuff. Plus I want to have product for Waco. So if we put it on the website, as you guys know, a lot of times a lot of that stuff sells out pretty quick and I don't want to be in Waco just with a table with nothing. So we're going to take what we've got and then uh, we'll get back and we'll get everything set back up. And then when we get back, we will be beginning to tease about Christmas. And I know it's August and nobody's thinking about Christmas. Everybody's thinking about kids going back to school. But if you're in the custom realm custom work uh industry or you're in retail christmas is coming fast so we'll actually start um taking orders usually i start taking christmas orders in august um, most of them in september going into october usually by the end of october my books are closed if not the beginning the middle of october um, i don't know how much we're going to take this year we'll just have to see i've got a book of customers that order from me every year and been doing this long enough that they've ordered from me for so long that i'd never tell them no so whatever they order we go ahead and take but as far as new orders and stuff we might um, limit that just so that we're a little more available to do videos for you guys and to uh, do our weekly snowman updates you know i mean that takes a lot of time and i don't want y'all to lose track and not know where we are for christmas you know um, i think it's important that somebody keeps telling you that we're one day closer to Christmas um, every week in that way so that you, do, you don't get relaxed and think that you got plenty of time. It takes a lot of time to have a cup of coffee and go up there and shoot that two-minute video talking about the weekly snowman update. So um, I want to be sure that I bracket out enough time during the week to be able to do that for you guys. All kidding aside, though, we will begin to start thinking about Christmas when we get back. Um, we're not going to start decorating or anything like that, but you do need to start thinking um, early about kind of how many orders you're going to take. Maybe sit down and write a write up a little budget and see how much how much time you have versus how much money you want to make um, for Christmas or what you need to make or whatever it might be, and how many available working days you're going to have. Because you've got to remember going into Christmas that you don't have just all that time. You've also got Thanksgiving. You've got Christmas parties, events, um, you know, um, maybe the kids have something going on at the school that you're going to have to take off for to go, um, go see because it's the end of the end of the semester and they do a Christmas program or something like that. Put all those dates on there first, the important things, and then work in the available work days that you're going to have to be able to work in your shop and get those deals done. Because it's a lot better to under estimate how much work you can do than to overestimate that because i think i talked about that last year i mean that is a real stressful christmas season whenever you just have way too much on your books and you can't get it all done because you just ran out of time and, and you're and you're just really really stressing and you're spending nights at the shop when you should be enjoying the christmas season um, i enjoy it all the time i like the fast pace i like the stress i like the um you know people calling and, and coming in and everybody's busy and there's all kinds of things going on it's cooler I like a lot of things about Christmas, but I, as I get older, I'm taking less and less because that stress part, that drives me a little bit, but it also annoys me. So I'm trying to keep some of that, some of that stress out 
of the shop as I go along. Especially now with kids, it's just, you know, it's a it's a big time of year for them. And so I don't want to be, you know, daddy's up at the shop all the time and uh, them going around Christmas shopping and hanging out and going to parties and stuff by themselves and me in the shop. So um, not that we do that, but it's just one of the deals I don't want to get in a bind where we've got way too much in the shop where I can't, I can't leave for that. So, um, so just keep that on your mind. And, um, and like I said, when we get back, we'll start kind of talking about a few things that you can do to kind of prepare for Christmas and prepare your shop as far as materials and supplies. Um, cause you want to be sure that you've got plenty of, of material and supplies in here. And if you get down to the wire, you're going to, that can pose issues cause you end up paying too much for something or too much shipping cause you need it shipped overnight because you need it tomorrow. Cause it's got to go out because their Christmas is two weeks earlier than regular Christmas. They didn't tell you that. And is there's a whole lot of deals that can throw kinks into your work schedule during Christmas time. So we'll get into some of that when we get back. But other than that, we're excited. We're going to go and wrap this up because I've got to get back at it and we've got to get a bunch of stuff packaged and priced and, and get everything lined out and try to package everything as tightly as possible so I can fit it in the back end of my Suburban because I don't have a trailer and I don't want to take too much stuff. So we're going to try to get everything kind of wrapped up and get ready to start packing and, uh, and get ready to go Wednesday afternoon. Like I said, we'll be there Wednesday night and then we hope to see you all Friday when the show begins. I appreciate y'all watching. Be sure to subscribe. And if you haven't already, be sure and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter on our website at dgsaddlery.com. That is our website. There's also a link to our website down in the description. We had a few people ask what my website is. It's always in the description. We'll always have a link to our website in the description. So be sure and check that out. But it is dg, as in Don Gonzalez, saddlery.com. So be sure and check that out. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see y'all next week after Waco.